All right, so um, let's start. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron. I'm from International Trade Council. I will be your moderator for today. And the webinar is about doing business in Estonia. And our speaker is Mr. Alvar Susar, Director of U.S. Investment and Trade for Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So before we start, um, I just want to inform you that uh, we will first uh, finish the presentation. And then once the pre presentation is over, um, we can accept uh, questions. So you can type in your question in the Q&A tab, like uh, on the uh, left side of the screen. And then um, I will help the speaker to um, read the question and answer it one by one. So uh, without any further ado, um, I will going to um, give the time right now to our speaker so that he can introduce himself, himself more. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome to Doing Business in Europe, how e-Estonia is driving innovation in Europe and beyond. My name's uh, Alvar Sosar. I'm the Director of U.S. Investment and Trade for the Estonian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I work from the Estonian Embassy in Washington. And I'm thrilled to be sharing information about Estonia and its amazing business environment and opportunities with you. Um, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm uh, both an American and an Estonian. And so I, I enjoy seeing the two uh, countries work side by side. Um, today, I'm going to share with you a little bit about Estonia and its life as the digital hub of Europe. Uh, how you can leverage Estonia as a launchpad into the rest of the European marketplace and why you should be looking to Estonia as your ideal business environment or partner. Um, after that, we'll dive into some Q&A with our host from ITC, Ron Nolasco. Um, we're gonna move quickly, but don't worry. If you have any questions on anything, we can address them at the end or one-on-one -on -one after the webinar. Uh, you see my uh, email address here at the front. It'll be repeated again at the end. Um, so feel free to reach out. So Estonia is a uh, country in Northern Europe. It's on the 59th parallel, uh, just next to Russia, right under Finland, just above Latvia. Um, it's in Northern Europe, as I mentioned, it's very much Nordic in its culture, language, and attitude, um, particularly a lot like Finland, actually. Um, it's larger geographically than the Netherlands or Denmark. Uh, at the peak of the summer, it's got about 22 hours of daylight, while in the winter, the sun can set as early as 3.30 in the afternoon. So Estonia is probably a good way to describe it is modest. Um, it's, it is constantly extending itself beyond its borders, and it, it, it had to do that. Um, and as a result, it continuously manages to punch above its weight. Uh, so much of its success is due to the unique partnership that has evolved between a forward-thinking government, a remarkably, pro remarkably proactive IT sector, and a plugged-in tech-savvy population. Uh, today, Estonia is a great information society. It's a member of the EU, NATO, WTO, OECD, and the Digital Nine, which is uh, nine leading digital governments. Uh, <clears throat> It's cited and referenced by experts globally as an excellent example for other countries striving to establish in quote unquote e-society. And in fact, we are home to the e-governance academy, which has begun, which has been running for 17 years, helping approximately 100 other countries build out their digital infrastructure. With 100, there's not that many that haven't come through the e-governance academy. How did we get here? Well, with only 1.3 million people, Estonia quickly realized that its size could actually be an advantage and that creative and effective solutions can be built up and tested quickly at a national scale. Uh, both the public and private sectors understood the need to build up the country as an information society and make e-state solutions available as the norm to reduce bureaucracy and make essential government services available to everyone. Estonia embodies a can-do attitude, leveraging its small size to equate with accessibility which sparks innovations faster and more consistently than almost anywhere else in the world. With trade wars, sanctions, pandemic lockdowns, all either happening or brewing, it is incumbent upon uh, American and multinational companies 
and their executives to ensure their own continuity and safety. Estonia and the U.S. have an excellent trade relationship subject to none of the tariffs many other European countries and uh, countries elsewhere are subject to. It is a fantastic place to expand a company's operations to gain new markets, particularly as a foothold in the European Union and the Eurozone, as well as to provide geographic and operational diversity of service providers and other aspects of your supply chain. The population is highly educated, technically savvy, they're multilingual, their second language generally is English. There's a lower cost base uh, in Estonia compared to Nordic countries, anywhere from 25 to 50% uh, for salaries, uh, and you know, compared to, say, Finland. Uh, we've talked a little bit about, and we'll talk later about, the very digital economy and society. But 99% of government services are available online. Uh, it, it's very easy and quick uh, to start a company. You, know, you have to have the proper documentation, of course, but uh, everything that can be done, made, made efficient from technology is done so. And if nothing else, Estonia is a fantastic foothold in Europe in, again, being both the EU and the Eurozone. In, in Europe, increasingly into the US and Asia, Estonia has built a name for itself as Europe's hub for digital knowledge and ease of doing business. We're a digital society. That means that Estonia has also become the world's first country to also function as a digital service. And what does this mean exactly? Well, essentially it's, it's a unique approach in that we offer a variety of state services to people outside of Estonia, in other words, to non-Estonians, through a program called e-residency. One can register a company online, again, about three hours, digitally sign and exchange encrypted documents, valid throughout the EU, which is a powerful asset, uh, obviously for you and for your business, uh, conduct secure online bank transfers, and make tax declarations electronically. Uh, a, few minute, a few years ago, the time to file taxes was eh, between five and eight minutes if you were uh, you had a particularly complicated uh, tax situation, um, but uh, we've succeeded in reducing that to an average time of three minutes. Uh, compare that to the US and how long it's taken me this year, I can tell you that's a significant savings. Um, in 2005, Estonia became the first nation in history to offer internet voting in a nationwide election. So <clears throat> nearly every one of Estonia's 1.3 million citizens has an ID card, which is a, essentially a national card with a chip that carries embedded files that can function as definitive proof of ID in an electronic environment, sort of like a passport, but in a card size. As mentioned a moment ago, the ID card applies to the highest EU standards and provide citizens with digital access to all of Estonia's secure e-services, making once bureaucratic and time-consuming daily tasks faster and more comfortable. Like the aforementioned banking or document signature, or even getting a digital medical prescription. Similarly, each e-resident, in other words, again, the non-Estonians, receives a similar chipped card that, while not usable for offline identification, can be used for online identification. Everything in this is built atop the KSI blockchain, which is one of the earliest instances of blockchain and has been integrated into all government services. It is highly, highly secure. Broadband data is available quite literally everywhere, from, down, from the capital downtown Tallinn to the middle of a peat bog in Southern Estonia. So the data exchange occurs over uh, something called the X-Road, which is a cornerstone of E-Estonia. It's an open source highway for data traffic. X-Road interconnects public and private databases, which are held in a distributed manner. While every institution manages its own processes, government institutions can decide independently which platforms and technology they use over X-Road. This means savings annually of about 1,407 ye years uh, in terms of work hours. 
while crew, while working at the open source backbone of eestonia xroad is invisible but crucial as an environment that allows the nation's various e-services databases both in the public and private sectors to link up and operate in harmony bear in mind the unique aspect of eestonia is that it lacks a centralized or master database all information is held in a distributed data system and can be exchanged instantly upon request, providing access 24-7. 651 institutions and enterprises, including as well as 504 public sector institutions, use the XROAD daily. For example, logging on with your EID into Tax and Customs, you can give permission to the system to take necessary data from the population register and create a connection with a person's bank account in order to pay necessary taxes and the required amounts. In this way, a pre-filled tax declaration is prepared that can be submitted with a click. Again, three minutes. Um, about 900 million transactions per year occur in this manner. This is all done without the need to print out any papers or drive anywhere. All you need is a suitable ID for your device and an internet connection, which again, as I mentioned, is pervasive. Today, Estonia has shared its e-governance journey with 60 governments and exported its solutions to over 130 countries around the world, um, including places as far away as uh, well, Finland next door, but Oman, Ukraine, Macedonia, Palestine, Azerbaijan, uh, amongst many, many others. Aside from exporting its knowledge, Estonia is the first in the world to interconnect decentralized components of the state and public sector databases on an international level. A public sector data exchange facility between Finland and Estonia was created in 2017. This means that in the future, health or education data on Estonian citizens can also be accessed by the Finnish government or private sector, regardless of whether the person is living in Estonia or Finland. Hopefully, cross-border data exchange will soon become possible between all European countries. So it, Estonia has uh, several key sectors. Obviously, ICT would be a big one, given how much we've been talking about it. But transport and logistics uh, is there's several ports and uh, a good rail system. Um, business services, you know, maybe banking, but it's also things like uh, you know law law firms and accounting, machinery, metalworking, electronics, uh, the wood industry, uh, both on um, uh, full logs as well as uh, you know paper and other things is a very important part of our economy and then the food industry is also uh, a, a crucial one main exports um, are you know in those in those basically in those categories bigger biggest one is machinery mechanical appliances wood articles of wood as mentioned mineral products other manufactured goods and base metals and articles of base metals uh, all are you know, in the eight to, to 11 percent range. Um, 2017 versus 2016 uh, exports increased by 8 um, percent. I apologize not uh, for not having a, a more updated uh, 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 count of that. Of course, you know, we know that because of COVID, things are a little little different this year. Um, our trade of goods with the U.S. is currently just shy of about a billion dollars. Um, uh, increased uh, by five. Hello, um, Alvaro, I think you lose your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, like we can hear you now. Um, the uh, I'll just repeat the the GDP of Estonia increased about five percent in 2017, um, and the infrastructure, uh, the digital infrastructure that we were just talking about, gets a business registered in Estonia. In uh, you, it takes you about 18 minutes to fill in the forms, uh, all online, and then about three hours to get legal approval. Uh, and again, making sure you've got everything. Uh, you know, all of your identification information correct. The tax regime is straightforward and low, uh, as indicated by our top ranking with the OECD on tax competitiveness. In particular, companies registered in Estonia do not have to pay income tax on reinvested profits. 
So, um, you know, you see we're you know, number one on, as I mentioned, on OECD tax competitiveness. Number two, economic freedom in the EU, seventh in the world. Uh, number one, internet freedom. Uh, number one, entrepreneurial activity by the World Economic Forum. Uh, number nine, digital economy and society. Uh, now, why number 12 in terms of ease of doing business? Well, this includes uh, the, one of the big measurements in this is the ease of sending and receiving faxes. And we seem to have lost some points there because no one's seen a fax machine in Estonia in several years, having found better solutions uh, in the, you know, what is 40 years since faxes were invented. So what is Estonia uh, well known for? Well, startups. Uh, although this, this picture here is actually in London, as many of you may recognize, uh, this, these are the founders of the startup TransferWise, who many of you may have in fact used to transfer money across borders. Um, they are uh, doing a great job in, in breaking apart uh, sort of the, the banking industries, um, oligopoly over over this area and have uh, made it certainly a lot less expensive for those of us who operate in multiple um, jurisdictions. Hello, Olivar. Hello. Sorry, I'm just um, checking if I think we lost your audio. Ah, okay. And the video, I mean, the presentation is not moving. It stops with information society indicators. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you now, but... Um, ah, uh, so... Ooh, I'm about five slides ahead. Okay. Um, we can actually uh, hear the explanation, but the slide was just stuck in information society indicators. Okay. Well, let's... Let me... Uh, okay. So you saw this. Sorry? You, you saw information side indicators, and then the next is uh, when I talked about X-Road. You see that? Um, no, the slide is still in information society indicators. Uh, okay, so. This is, I'm going to stop and restart sharing. Okay, sure. Sorry for the... Yep, sorry for the technical issues. We're going to uh, reshare the slides again, sorry. Can you see it now? Yep, there we go. Okay. Are we on um, exchange, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. The, so the it's showing now key sectors. Yeah, okay. Somehow we got this connected, but that's, I think we're okay. So exchange right. was the, the backbone of the uh, Estonian uh, public services and, and how the business sector kind of uh, gets in there and how we've other Sorry, Alvar, your audio is cutting in and out. Hello? Alvar? I am here. Can you... Nothing is changing. Okay. We can hear you clear now. Okay. I, I'm not changing anything, so I don't know what's what's happening, but... Yeah. Go okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about the exports, what we've... What we've uh, you know, it's certain areas. You know, machinery is our biggest area, but uh, you know, uh, wood, mineral, other manufactured base metals, all of them are are major parts of the economy. Um, key figures: our GDP has grown quite a bit in um, over the last few years. Uh, you know, and it was five percent in twenty seventeen. 
and uh, as as more information comes in, we'll know we'll know better. Um, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about how to start a company, how quickly it can be done. Our tax competitiveness is very strong um, with a 20% va uh, value added tax, 0% uh, tax on reinvested profits. Um, next slide, international rankings. Uh, again, uh, number one, number two in uh, tax competitiveness, economic freedom, internet freedom, entrepreneurial activity, and a uh, little bit lower on, on uh, ease of doing business because we don't use fax machines anymore. Uh, the startup economy or the startup uh, scene in Estonia is very strong. Um, and that has grown out of um, many of these, um, uh, many of the IT and, and, and infrastructural uh, aspects, allowing people to feel very comfortable to, to get out and, and start something and the tools are just on hand. At the moment, there are nearly a thousand startups in Estonia in a variety of sectors, uh, green tech, fintech, uh, you know, IOT and beyond. Um, and when you consider that there's only about 1.3 million people living in Estonia, that's uh, quite a bit. Um, of those thousand, there have been four so far, uh, so-called unicorns, which tech companies valued more than a billion dollars. Uh, Skype, probably the most prominent one. Playtech, TransferWise, which we just saw. Taxify, formerly known as Bolt, or sorry, now known as Bolt, formerly known as Taxify. And, um, and there are others that uh, are gonna be getting closer as, as we're seeing right now. Um, those Estonian startups have raised about a billion euros over the past 12 years, and 92% of those investments have come from abroad. It's the 90, number three destination for VC capital uh, globally. Um, the increased interest of foreign investors confirms that Estonian startups are being noticed globally, that we have a strong startup ecosystem and a credible, transparent business environment. Uh, we have something called a startup visa which helps non-EU founders grow their startups in Estonia. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, um, but it also makes it easy for, or easier for Estonian startups to hire non-EU talent. Uh, in the first two years since the launch, we've received uh, over a thousand applications from companies and 931 people altogether have relocated to Estonia already or have been granted the right to do so. Um, one of the nice things about the, or one of the reasons why the uh, ecosystem in Estonia is so strong is that there's a strong, there's a, there's a very pervasive give back mentality. So, you know, the starters, the founders of, um, of Skype are also the founders of some of these other companies, or if they're not like, you know, Fortumo, TransferWise, Taxify, Starship, Pipedrive, um, they, the the Skype uh, founders and others have been early money, early angel investors uh, into these companies, and they've given of their expertise as well. Um, one good example is Starship Technologies, um, the which it, itself emerged as a. Uh, I'm on the Starship Technologies uh, slide. Is that what you all are saying? Should be slide number 15. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, Starship, as you can see by the, the, the cute robot, is, uh, uh, is, a, is a essentially a delivery company um, using, uh, using robots. And it emerged out of a partnership between the government, but also universities and, um, and a group of founders. Um, and Starship now has been tested in more than 100 cities uh, globally. I, I know I've, I've actually seen them on the streets here in the States. Uh, and they are as cute as they look there. Um, another company uh, that is uh, come out of a university setting, uh, this time out of the University of Tartu. The first one was out of the Technical University or Taltec in, in the capital, Tallinn. Um, is skeleton technologies, and as you can see, it's essentially it's a it's a battery um, creator, but specifically, it's ultra capacitor based energy storage. 
and uh, they power the European um, uh, space efforts, the ESA. Um, so we, uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, the startup visa. Um, essentially, it's, you know, it, it, it helps non-EU founders uh, scale up. Uh, you know, you can you you may or may not, may not be able to find uh, people in Estonia to work, and if you can't, you've got the perfect people outside. Um, you need to uh, and you need to bring them in. This allows you to do so. Um, so the it's only been around for a couple of years, um, and I'm on slide number eighteen now. Um, we've been attracting folks from mostly from EU EU countries, but it's allowed us to uh, make some of these Estonian startups a lot bigger and a lot more effective, both in terms of the skills that have been brought in, as well as the you know access to different cultures, which helps market entry. Um, the founders, we've had, we've had quite a few founders from uh, countries, non-EU countries come to Estonia as a place where they actually want to get their company going. Um, specifically, Russia, Iran, Turkey, India. I've also seen quite a few from Belarus and Ukraine. Um, yeah, as far as employees, uh, Brazilians, Indians, Russians, Ukrainians have all uh, come in and are the, the, the top sort of um, places where, where folks have come in from. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference between the startup visa and e-residency, and just want to make sure you understand the difference. Um, one is one is sort of for um, working abroad, and one is for working inside of Estonia. So the startup visa gets you into physical access to the Estonian ecosystem. Um, you know, you, you can enter the country, you can exit and enter the country. Uh, you relocate and uh, pretty high success rate, about 35%. E-residency is you know, virtual access, um, doesn't give you the right or permission to enter the country, but it really helps do business in Estonia and writ large throughout the European Union. And as you can see, uh, there are 60,000, because of 60,000 EU residents, it's been a very, very successful uh, program. So, you know, the feedback has been very positive. Um, Edelson Osorio out of Brazil, you know, told us he made a matrix list, matrix listing, excuse me, across many jurisdictions and looked at taxes, regulation, costs. Because they wanted to enter the EU, Estonia was at the top of their list, and so he is a a uh, founder in in Estonia. Um, so Estonia, as far as ease of doing business, it's you know the, the cornerstone of our of our economic growth is entrepreneurship and exports. This is why the state contributes to an ex, uh, to creating an attractive business environment and has bear, paired its bureaucracy down to a bare minimum and facilitated an environment where business is easy, but also secure with blockchain technology. From starting a company, declaring taxes, filing annual reports, you can do all of it without leaving your couch. It's a simple fact. Where business is easy, businesses will grow. Uh, this is why Estonia is among the top countries hosting the highest concentration of startups per capita. Um, so we talked a little bit again about the, you know, how easy it is to start a company. 99.8% um, of banking transactions are done online. 99% uh, of people establish their companies online. 95% of taxes are filed online. Um, and the goal for the balance of 2020 is to get 100% uh, tax reporting, at least automization of it for, for the current year. Uh, and then, of course, e-residency. So a little bit about our tax system. Um, we already talked a little bit about corporate income tax on reinvested profits. And what that means is it, it really doesn't matter how profitable your company is uh, from, from the tax perspective. 
as long as you keep the profits inside the company, it'll have a 0% tax. So no dividends out, then you don't pay any taxes at a corporate level. Um, if you do distribute it in a, in a uh, dividend, you pay anywhere from 14 to 20%, depending on your specific situation. Uh, on a personal level, there is a 20% income tax, a 20% VAT, which actually applies to businesses as well. So that's, for Americans, a VAT is sort of a, as you're buying, almost a sales tax. As you buy anything, a service or, or an item, you, you, you pay a 20% uh, tax on that. And then employers have to pay a 33% uh, social tax on behalf of their employees. So much like the U.S. has Social Security and Medicare, um, Estonia has a similar um, a robust program for which the, the tax is 33%. There's no property tax. Um, there is a land tax, which is uh, the essentially when you transfer property from one um, one a person or or entity to another so you know the these this very simple and low tax regime puts us in good company and in fact at the top of the group in terms of uh uh tax competitiveness and i mean i, I i'm happy to be considered in the same realm as you know new zealand latvia switzerland and sweden so it, it's uh it's a very good thing there um so uh, moving on a little bit to the labor force. Um, our labor force consists of about 702,000 people. I mentioned that they are multilingual. Uh, English is, is by, by far the second language, and it's at a very high level. Um, unemployment rate in 2018 was 5.4%. That is obviously higher due to COVID, but um, there was actually not all that much disruption uh, in Estonia due to, as far as working goes, uh, due to COVID. And the reason for that is, you know, while Americans have always, you know, prized the ability to work from home a day, um, so, you know, so, certainly so have Estonians, but because everything is, is digital, uh, Estonians have always been able to virtually work from anywhere. And so the impact of not being in an office uh, really was very minimal and, uh, and, and sort of life, life went on. Um, the average wage in Estonia is about uh, 1,300 euros. Um, you know, we, in terms of uh, potential uh, human capital maximization, we're number 12. Our typical work week is five days, and that's eight hours a day. Um, and there are 10 public holidays. Uh, there is a government mandated 28 day annual vacation. Um, and so you have to kind of, kind of keep that in mind. Um, and it, it's pretty, it's, it's well, well established and well followed. So uh, one good success story is the, is the company Kuhn and Nagel. Um, they came in and uh, uh, about, ooh, I guess now uh, 16 or uh, sorry, 14 years ago uh, and, and have been adding people uh, on, on, on the hit uh, 100 people in 2013, about seven years later, um, another 40 people on top of that by a year later, and now they're at 300, uh, actually a little bit higher than that now. Um, and, uh, and from, from there, um, have, you know, have a good approach to the Northern Baltic. Um, so Estonia is uh, open for truly for everybody. I mean, you, you know, you're, you if you come here to do things that um, are generally, you know, a good a good startup, a, a a a chapter for your or a unit of your of your company, uh, toehold into Europe. It's, it really is open for everybody. Um, and, you know, one of the things that, you, you know, as, as I mentioned, I think early on was there, there are, there are tariffs right now between a variety of the large economies, um, in the world. And, and, you know, this is a good way to, uh, access the European market without having to deal with that. There are no tariffs at this point, um, between our two countries. Um, 
you know, world-class human capital. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, highly skilled, highly educated. Uh, there are uh, a number of, of universities, you know, the, the, the top university, uh, uh, University of Tartu is, is now in the top 200, 250 universities in the world. Um, and, uh, and the technical university puts out uh, amazing engineers on a, on a regular basis that have, uh, both universities have created an amazing number of, of new companies that uh, we're, we're very proud of. So um, the nice thing about a well-educated uh, population and workforce and um, uh, and just generally a, a good regime as far as um, innovation is concerned is that Estonia becomes a nice sort of test bed for technologies. Um, and uh, you know this is again our little friendly robot, and they. Um, it was tested first in Dailin and and then and then went went elsewhere. Um, we had uh, just a couple of years ago in in, in 2017 um, a, actually a a self driving bus. Now some of us have, have driven you know in our Teslas and allowed it to take over, but this is uh, truly a self driving bus and uh, went went around to Dailin and and picked people up and it was a little. Uh, a little uh, took a little bit of getting used to certainly, but um, um, it it was the the centerpiece of of um, uh, of one part of when Estonia took over the EU presidency that year. The guests arriving could actually take one of those buses to the headquarters of the uh, events uh, in Tallinn, and about a year later, there was a self driving car called Ise Auto. Uh, that was built between uh, a private company, Silver Auto, and um, the Technical University, Taltec, uh, and made its first official ride. Um, Starship, the, the, this, the, this robot here, has uh, already started to and aims to certainly fundamentally reshape how goods are shipped and delivered. Um, they provide door to door autonomous robot transport uh, and can deliver goods locally in about, well, maybe 30 minutes, but typically 15 to 30 minutes within a three kilometer radius. Uh, of course, these robots are monitored continuously by humans, but they are driving autonomously. Um, and then, I don't know if many of you have been have been into Walmarts um, where, or you can actually see uh, the same thing at, um, uh, at Lowe's and Home Depot. Uh, there's a essentially lockers where you can pick up items. And um, in December 2018, the company that creates those lockers, Cleveron, um, also started a delivery vehicle and brings it that, that can bring items from a warehouse to those lockers. And so that is automating a lot of the um, warehousing inventory aspects even further. So um, again, saving time, saving effort, and uh, and certainly it's a safety issue. So Estonia, you know, with the KSI blockchain is one of the blockchain pioneers of the world. And I'm on uh, number 30, uh, slide 30, just in case. Um, you know, we, we uh, put out the first, we deployed the first blockchain uh, technology in 2012, and um, I think many of you understand what blockchains are. But but essentially, the way to think of it is a, a non uh, it's it's a non centralized network that uh, enables uh, people to and, and governments and whoever whoever is you know involved with it to verify certain aspects you know prove who you are without giving um, access to information. Uh, we need to stress that blockchain, in particular this blockchain, does not equal Bitcoin. We're not talking about cryptocurrencies here. Um, so Estonia is, is a country that has 
in many ways uh, embraced artificial intelligence and uh, much like we did a blockchain, much like we did um, you know, other technological uh, leap forwards, um, we are doing so in the public sector. Um, there's something, there's a, there's a program called CRAT, uh, which uh, you know, has helped sort of define our digital agenda. Um, and the objective of this is to have about 50, at least 50, really, use cases of AI in the public sector. And um, this is led by this, this um, let's say, priority uh, is led by uh, the government office and the government's uh, uh, chief information officer. Um, the, the, this task force put together a legal framework to enable the use of fully autonomous software systems in all different areas and regulate the relevant liability, safety, and other issues. Um, put together a national AI plan or strategy on how to advance uh, the use, the uptake of AI solutions in public sector as well as in the wider economy. And has raised public awareness related to all things AI. Uh, employment market challenges, education, use cases. Um, and a couple of these, you know, pretty cool use cases um, uh, were uh, the use of, of machine learning by the Information System Authority to detect anomalies and uh, traffic incidents um, in, the, uh, in the X road. And so, you know, just sort of saying, okay, well, where are the where does more where do more resources need to be resources need to be pushed? Um, this is true, and also in the actual regular highways, um, in trying to figure out how uh, police should be sent in terms of traffic regulations at certain times of day, whether there's you know a traffic accident, for example. Um, the unemployment insurance fund uh, actually uses AI to match job seekers with open positions. And uh, it is, it, you know, it's a continuously uh, learning, self-learning, um, iterative uh, technology and, uh, and has been doing a very good job. Uh, as far as the, uh, the, 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 on the agricultural sector, the Estonian Agricultural Registers and Information Board uses machine learning to detect uh, whether land has been uh, mowed or plowed. Um, you know, they take satellite images and then um, and then they analyze them. And uh, the reason why this is important is mowing one's land is a requirement for receiving certain government grants. Uh, previously, they had to do that. Uh, with spot checks, which is obviously highly uh, inefficient um, and uh, you know this and, and expensive, frankly. Um, so we're looking for ways to use AI in the public sector as well as introduce it into the private sector. And um, we're looking for ways to 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 improve uh, you know our approach in there. In terms of cyberspace, so cyberspace, cybersecurity, uh, this is a cornerstone of, of e-Estonia. We're a, a digital society that has been threatened and in fact attacked um, in the past. And we, uh, we learned from that and uh, we put in solid investments into the cybersecurity um, infrastructure. Uh, and as a result, has, have developed extensive expertise in this area and now are uh, widely recognized as being at or near the top of the world in terms of cybersecurity experts. And in fact, there was a, an article in yesterday's um, news, I believe, or maybe this morning, that the U.S. Army just signed a large um, uh, contract with, uh, with uh, a, a dealing with cybersecurity uh, with with an Estonian uh, company, um, so today it takes about seven months, two hundred and seven days on average, to discover a data breach. And you know, those of us who who live in the states may well rem remember, uh, maybe about a year or two ago, it just seemed like every couple of months there was a massive data breach. Um, with the Estonian KSI blockchain technology, these breaches are essentially discovered instantly. And because of this, and because we use blockchain, 
um, we're number one in the world uh, as far as national level uh, security uh, purposes for this sort of thing. Um, we've been prioritizing security, cybersecurity, as much as we've been prioritizing the developing of uh, digital services. A strong e-government has to include strong network and information system security solutions and practices. Cybersecurity is one of the top priorities for Estonia in our digital efforts, and thus we make ourselves more resilient by using distributed infrastructure, for instance. Moreover, we have allocated crucial resources to create effective cyber capabilities for managing potential malicious, malicious activity. The Estonian Cyber Defense League is an innovative model for the involvement of professional volunteers in national cyber defense. It focuses on strengthening the professional cyber defense skills of our volunteer members in order to prepare and enhance support capabilities in a crisis. Similarly, uh, well, maybe not similarly, in a, in a related way, uh, Estonia created a data embassy. So essentially, we set up a, an embassy, a virtual embassy effectively, to ensure that our national digital continuity or national digital society would have continuity. And we actually chose Luxembourg to be the host of our uh, data servers outside of, you know, the first ones outside of our own, um, mostly because they have a very high uh, security um, you know, sort of system and they're very flexible and similar to Estonia in, in many other ways. Uh, but this data embassy is an extension of the Estonian hybrid government cloud, uh, which means the, the state owns the server resources outside of the territory, our territorial boundaries. And um, we have 10 critical data sets that are stored in data servers over there. Um, those resources are under our control, under our state control, secured against cyber attacks uh, or crisis uh, situations and have to be capable not only of providing data backups, but also of operating the most critical services. So uh, another area, and, and, and this, this also includes NATO, um, the Estonian Defense Forces Cyber Command was established in uh, 2018. Uh, NATO's Center for uh, Excellence as far as um, uh, cybersecurity is also based in uh, in Tallinn, and uh, these these two organizations certainly work uh, very closely together. Um, but you know, it, it it shows the level of seriousness that um, our NATO allies um, uh, see and, and, or and take the Estonian capabilities in this area. So that is most of it. Um, happy to answer some questions. We do have a um, a trade mission, an ITC trade mission coming. Well, I'm, I'm used to it being in person, but this is a virtual one uh, for understandable reasons. Um, and that is coming up next month. And we would love to um, invite you to, to participate. All right. Um, Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Alvar. So um, I'll give you 30 seconds to answer the poll about the virtual um, trade mission that will be happening next month. Um, I'll give you 30 seconds to answer it. Uh, having and, trouble seeing. Sorry. Ah, here it is. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm seeing uh, that there seem to be there seems to be quite a bit of uh, interest in a virtual trade mission. Um, uh, people are still voting. It looks. Yep. And then if you're done um, voting, you can actually type in your questions to the Q and A tab, and um, we can answer the questions right now. So, all right, so let's start the q and a. I, the first question I got through Alvar is, um, what about biotech startup? What about biotech startups? Well, um, you know, in both directions, uh, Estonia's got a very strong biotech sector um, out of it's, this is one of the examples of our university partnerships. And uh, the University of Tartu in particular, so Tartu is the, the major university town in southern Estonia. 
And um, uh, there's a very strong, um, uh, well, overall startup culture there, but but there's a biotech cluster there. And um, we it's turned out some phenomenal companies involved in digital health, uh, in pharma, um, and and other sort of related areas. So, you know, that's I, I'm not sure that that answers the question, but there are you know some investors in Estonia that look at that space, um, and certainly we as a um, sort of trade and and investment uh, oriented organization have helped some of those companies come to the states and and elsewhere uh, throughout the world to uh, try to help them find you know investment find uh, customers and uh, and and markets to come into all right thank you um next question is um do you have a green salon network in estonia we are working with the green salons network in nordic finland and denmark uh, I, the the terminology I, I'm not familiar with green salon. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's green tech and a green tech network. Um, and if if it is that, uh, there are uh, a number of uh, of green tech companies and 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 infrastructure in the, in Estonia. Um, just as a as a tiny bit of history, Estonia has been effectively um, energy independent for almost 100 years uh, since uh, it, the oil was discovered in or shale oil was discovered in in um, in northeastern Estonia uh, but that uh, that energy is very uh, very dirty and we have um, we have agreed to certain uh, uh, certain uh, you know increasing the amount of green energy and green technology to come in line with um, with uh, you know certain standards and so as a result there've been there's been a lot of increase in um, solar uh, facilities uh, wind certainly if you're if you're flying into Estonia you'll see uh, large uh, you know uh, wind um, uh, turbines uh, by the coast, and um, and then all of those have generated interesting companies to service that space, or you know the know-how that has developed from the large uh, uh, companies there uh, are now involved in in, in smaller, uh, you know, have come up with their own ideas and doing doing things in the in the startup space. And in fact, I have a call next week with a um, an accelerator in uh, in Tallinn that is that is uh, entirely green. Um, you know, clean tech focused. Um, Alvar, uh, he mentioned that it's not about the green tech. He clarifies that it's about a network of cosmetic salon that is well known in EU. Got it. Okay, I apologize. Um, uh, I I don't know. I can I can certainly look into it and and uh, get back to you. Or, or please reach out to me directly on my email. Yep. Yep. Um, he. You can reach out to him directly uh, with the email address that is shown in the slides right now, sir. So next is any pharmaceutical se sector inputs? Inputs in terms of um, yeah, producers of pills, producers of colors, producers of coatings, that sort of thing. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, there's a there's a uh, uh, in Thailand there's a there's a group that does that does quite a bit of that stuff. Um, I don't have the specific information at my fingertips, uh, but um, again, happy to talk specifically about that. Uh, you know, either in a separate call or or over email. Yep. Thank you. And um, how do I start up a business in Estonia? Well, so you know, a um, little bit of a joke. You should have an idea for a business first. Uh, but if you have that and you've uh, got the uh, you know you've got the money for it, the capital for it, then it's actually very easy. If you don't have the capital for it, it's it's still somewhat easy. But you know you've you've got to put out some of your own money for it first. Um, the first thing you do is I would say is become an e-resident, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, there's, 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 it's a pretty straightforward process. And again, we can, we can, um, well, there's plenty of websites for that, but 
again, you can reach out. And uh, then you uh, start your company. And as I mentioned, it's about an 18 minutes on uh, in online forums. And then about three hours later, you'll find out if uh, it's been accepted. And there you've got your, your company. Thank you. And how about ICO regulations in, in Estonia? So um, there are companies that are involved with uh, cryptocurrencies. I am not um, facile with specifically what the regulations around um, ICOs are. There have been some in the past, um, but uh, you know those those have occurred in many places around the world. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not sure what the what the what the laws say at the moment. Um, again, I'm happy to look into that. Thank you. Next question is, I don't know if it's very general, but maybe you can give some insight about this. How about becoming public company? So um, Estonia's got a, a, uh, a stock exchange. It's, um, it's a NASDAQ company, NASDAQ OME. Um, mm -hmm. It's part of a network of stock exchanges with the other two Baltic capitals, as well as Finland and uh, over to Sweden. Um, so it's very possible to become a public company, but you know there are regulations and uh, you know, you know, the securities laws are what they are. Um, but I think it depends on what you do, you know and um, but there are advisors who can, you know local advisors who are happy to help you and um, if it's something that investors like, then yeah, there aren't all that many you know reasons why you couldn't do it. All right, thank you. Uh, what is the regulatory process for international companies setting up in Estonia? So it's, it's you know, look, it, you have to prove who you are. The company has to be doing something um, legitimate in its, in its home country. Um, typically, there's a requirement to know who the decision makers are in, in that company. And that's defined by company officers. Uh, owners above a certain percentage threshold. Um, you know, if you can answer those questions satisfactorily, um, it's it's not it's not overly difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But again, depends on the company. All right. Um, last two last two questions. What are legal services? How sorry? How are legal services regulated in Estonia? Regulated. Uh, that's pretty specific. Um, I mean, look, they, the the um, there are a number of law firms that are pan European or certainly pan Baltic. Mm -hmm. uh, they are um, there. I know of a, a handful where there are even people who are uh, have passed the bar both in uh, Estonia as well as in the U.S. Um, so I know that. They are generally cons well regarded by by uh, the, you know the American side, uh, but you know as far as regulation, I, I I can't answer that specifically. I just I just don't have that information. But I'm happy to look into it. All right, thank you. So um, other questions here are quite very specific. So um, I highly recommend uh, to send him an email directly. I put the email here. Anyway, uh, we have um, a copy of your questions in our platform. I will forward a question to him, and um, Alba will go into email you directly. So um, I think um, that will be all for the Q and A. So again, for those uh, questions that were not answered yet, um, I have his email address here, and I'm going to forward all the que specific questions to him, and then he will possibly get back to you uh, through email. So again. Um, I would like to invite you guys to our um, virtual trade mission next month. We will definitely send you an email with the information. And um, anything else you would like to add, uh, Alvar? No, I just thank you for for your time, and I thank you, Ron, for for your your help here. This was really help. This was really great. Thank you. You're welcome. So again, thank you so much for attending today's webinar, and we hope to see you guys in our vir virtual trade mission next month. And you guys stay safe and you will get back to some of the questions that were not answered via email. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Alvar. Thank you, Ron.
Bye-bye. Bye.